All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, if you're watching a replay, if you are watching us live this morning, it is great to have you this morning. It is Thursday. Just uh, if you are a part of Central Church in Sioux Falls, we, um, we postponed the Christmas Eve service last night and moved it to tonight, um, thinking weather would be um, a factor. And uh, so if you are traveling uh, tomorrow or Saturday and uh, would like to go to Christmas Eve service, six o'clock tonight, Central Church, our first Christmas Eve service. And then of course we have five Christmas Eve services on Saturday, beginning at 11 o'clock, uh, spaced by an hour and a half, 11, uh, 12, 30, two, and so on. So good to see you this morning. God bless you. This is happy Thursday. It is burr out there, Heather. It is cold. The gauges are in the house. Great to see everyone that's joining us this morning. All right, here's what we've been doing. A couple of weeks ago, I said we had 15, <clears throat> excuse me, 15 prayer days left until Christmas. Uh, that's down to two, today and tomorrow, two prayer days. And what we've been doing is reading the Christmas story in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of Luke. And then I've been drawing prayer points out of the Christmas story. And we're going to be finishing the Christmas story today. Uh, I've also been reading quotes, Christmas quotes. And uh, let me read one to you this morning. God grant you the light of Christmas, which is faith. God grant you the warmth of Christmas, which is love. God grant you the radiance of Christmas, which is purity. God grant you the righteousness of Christmas, which is justice. God grant you the belief in Christmas, which is truth. God grant you the all of Christmas, which is Christ. Amen? All right. How are you doing today? Give me a thumbs up if you're doing well today. It is Thursday. It is officially, listen, one step ahead of the enemy Thursday. That's what today is. Where are you, Freddie? Today is one step ahead of the enemy Thursday. So the last 11 verses of the Christmas story in Matthew follow a script, a narrative of God protecting Jesus from Herod's plan to kill him. Four times in this text, in Matthew 2, uh, God reveals to those in charge of protecting Jesus what Herod is about, uh, what Herod is trying to do to harm Jesus. But God is always one step ahead of the enemy. Let's read this this morning as we end the Christmas story. Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. Uh, the wise men were warned by God <clears throat> in a dream, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> not to return to Herod. So the, the Magi, the wise men, left for their own country by another way. So there's the first instance where God warns the wise men about going back to Herod and telling Herod where the Christ child was. So God is already, we see him, protecting Christ. Verse 13, Now when the wise men had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night, and they left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. So God warns the wise men not to go back through Jerusalem. They go another way. God warns Joseph that Herod is trying to kill Jesus. And so at night they flee to Egypt. Now skipping down to verse 19. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go into the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Then, again, after being warned by God in a dream, he left for the regions of Galilee and came and lived in a city called Nazareth. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. <clears throat> All right. So what we see in this text is God constantly warning um, people that are in charge of protecting Jesus of Herod's threat to kill him. Um, I believe God constantly reveals in our lives what the enemy is trying to do to harm our children, our grandchildren, our family, and our loved ones. 
Um, there's another scripture in Acts chapter 23 where this happened to Paul. Here's what I'm saying. I think God super, if we're paying attention, I think God will supernaturally reveal to us harmful plans, destructive plans of the enemy uh, for, our, for our loved ones. So Paul has a similar situation. Acts 23, verses 12 to 17. When it was day, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 men who formed this plot. They came to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a solemn oath to taste nothing, to eat no food until we have killed Paul. Now, therefore, you and the council, notify the commander to bring him down to you as though you were going to determine his case by a more thorough investigation. And we, on our part, are ready to slay Paul before he comes near the place. But the son of Paul's sister, his nephew, heard about their ambush and he came and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, Lead this young man to the commander, for he has something to report to him. They did, and the commander got Paul out. He, he, he gave him a, um, 200 men to get Paul out of the city. So again, Paul, Paul has that revealed through his nephew. Uh, right place, right time? Maybe. Coincidence? No, because God wanted Paul to be saved. So he made sure that that, that, that threat was revealed to somebody so Paul could be delivered from that. See, God reveals Satan's plans to harm if we're paying attention. This is one step ahead of the enemy Thursday. God is always one step ahead of the enemy. So we're going to pray today for God to expose Satan's plans against our children, our grandchildren, or our family, or loved ones. We're going to pray today that God would keep us one step ahead of the enemy. God, I, I believe God will show you in your child or grandchild's life or someone's life, an unhealthy relationship uh, that your child is in so you can pray them out of it. God, God may just give you an insight, discernment, that that relationship is not healthy. Uh, if they're young enough, you can just force the issue and say you're not going to hang around that person. If they're older, you may just have to pray them out of that relationship. But, but have your spiritual antenna up for God to begin to show you relationships and influences in your children's life that are harmful or your grandchildren's life. God will reveal drugs, alcohol, pornography, or other sinful things so that you can deal with it and pray for it. Just keep your eyes open. God will supernaturally show you destructive things that your children are involved with. God will show you attitudes uh, that are being influenced by Satan. Uh, I wrote a couple down here. Things like lust, rebellion, laziness, and pride. If, we, if we're praying and we're paying attention... <clears throat> The Lord will show us the things that are harming our children. And so we need to keep our spiritual antenna up. And, and if Satan's in, have you ever had your kid just have this, this attitude that's like, whoa, where did that come from? Where did that snappy attitude, where did that pride, where did that uh, attitude come from? And, and sometimes the Lord will just give you discernment to, to recognize that's from the enemy. And we need to pray against that demonic influence, that attitude in our child's life. God will reveal eating disorders. God will reveal other destructive behaviors before it's too late. Before those things seriously harm your children, I believe as you're praying that God would show you that God will reveal the, the, the steps of the enemy before they happen, before they become destructive. God is always one step ahead of the enemy in our lives, friends. you believe that? And so if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're a friend, and, and, God, and you're praying for, for, for those people in your life, God's going to show you things. And then you have to act on it, either in prayer or by, by actively forcing the issue and doing something to prevent that harmful attempt of the enemy, the plans of the enemy. Paul says, we're not ignorant of, this, of the enemy's designs. We're not ignorant of the enemy's plans. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says, put on the full armor of God that you can resist the plans of the enemy, the schemes uh, and tactics of the enemy. So God wants to reveal to you what's going on in your kids' lives, your grandkids' lives, your, children, your, your relatives' lives, your friends' lives, so you can stay one step ahead of the enemy. We're going to pray this morning, friends, as, as God revealed to Joseph and Mary and the wise men how to protect Jesus, how to keep him from Herod. I believe God wants to protect our children uh, by giving us revelation in those areas. Let's pray this morning, friends. Lord, this morning we pray in Jesus' name for our children, our grandchildren, those we love, those we care about, 
that you would expo- expose the plans of the enemy, that you would expose the, the wicked schemes of Satan to steal, kill, and destroy, that you would open our eyes today, God, that we wouldn't be naive, we wouldn't think that our, our children are perfect, that they would never do that, that they would never get into that, God, help us to get over that pride and to realize the reality of sin in people's lives. And so, Lord, expose the plans of the enemies the, of the enemy in our children's life in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray today, as we recognize unhealthy relationships, that you would break them off in Jesus' name, that you would bring separation, supernatural separation between relationships, between people that are going to negatively influence, negatively and lead astray our children and grandchildren. Break those relationships off, Father, in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would reveal hidden sins in our children's lives, in our grandchildren's lives, in our loved ones, those hidden sins, so we can can pray them out of it, God, so we can pray them through it, Lord, today. Reveal them to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, show us demonic spirits that are influencing their attitudes, lust, rebellion, laziness, pride, uh, Lord, uh, all of the things that, that the enemy wants to, to use to influence our children, we pray today, God, that you would, you would protect them, God, that you would deliver them from those spirits, you would deliver them from those, those attacks against them, those assignments in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray today you'd keep us one step ahead of the enemy, one step ahead, just like you did with Joseph and Mary. They fled to Egypt so that Herod couldn't kill him. The wise men went a different way, so Herod wouldn't have that information. Lord, you're always one step. So God, today as parents, grandparents, friends, keep us one step ahead of the enemy. And Lord, we pray today you'd keep our children and our grandchildren safe from the evil one. Protect them, Lord. Deliver them. We pray, lead them not into temptation today, Lord, but deliver them from the evil one. You told us to pray that way, Lord, so we do. Give us wisdom and discernment as parents, grandparents, and friends, Lord, that we might know what the enemy is doing in their lives. Expose the plans of darkness. Reveal your plans and purpose, God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Come on. Amen. 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 It is one step ahead of the enemy Thursday. I I think this is true not only for our kids and grandkids. and It's true for our lives. The enemy is going to expose the plans of darkness in your life so you can stay one step ahead of the enemy. He's trying to trip you up, friend. He's trying to lead you astray. And God will reveal the plans of darkness if you will be sensitive to it, pray for it, and, and keep your eyes open. Amen. All right. See you tonight, maybe, if you, if you are, are going to go to the Christmas Eve service at Central, or we'll see you Saturday. It is a great Thursday. Stay warm. It's going to be, I think it's, it's minus 100 degrees today. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's cold, so stay warm. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning.